welcome to this video. This is coverage for round 10, the final round of the Singfield Cup 2013 that uh, was held in St. Louis, USA. Let's look at the final round games. Yeah, the tournament, of course, is already uh, decided. Caruana had such a brilliant event that he had it in the back uh, already uh, for two rounds. So it's um, just about final standing, maybe some prize money. Let's see what happened in this round. I'm starting with Nakamura against um, Vashila Graf. Both players um, near the bottom of the table, especially Nakamura had a, a really terrible event. So let's see what happened in the last round. We get a knight off. MVL's favorite defense against e4. And Nakamura goes for h3. This funny looking move nowadays is one of the main lines against the knight off, intending um, a g4 push. It all depends a bit on black's response, of course, but very often white wants to go g4. And what black is doing now is a very modern approach that simply prevents a g4. <laughs> um, I think this kind of approach would have been pretty much unthinkable. 20, 30 years ago, but nowadays it looks um, kind of normal that you want to prevent the space gainer. The only apparent drawback of this move is that bishop g5 is a pin and white will probably manage to get this traded on f6 so that he has at the end three three pieces to yeah to control d5 and black only two def to defend it. This is a typical device in the Sicilian here with the, the weakened square, with the white very often enjoying an advantage. But it uh, very much depends on how the pieces are positioned. One problem is, and we will see this later, especially here, that white has three pieces for this square, but uh, there's just one square. So you have a ton of pieces that are in a way um, yeah, superfluous. The knight on c3, for example, is just a backup piece for d5, but it's not doing very much on its own. And if black in this uh, position type avoids trades on the d5 square, he is normally totally okay. What he shouldn't do, for example, after a move like played in the game here, black shouldn't play something like knight e7. This is a positional mistake that um, eases um, white's life considerably. Yeah, this Check. kind of this kind of uh, trade is simply good for white as now those two pieces are really doing something here and the knight on c3 is gone. Black should do something active with this knight on c6 and not trade and what he did was to jump to d4. It's also very logical that after knight e2 he did not take on e2 but on b3. Here the same thing applies for the tra as, as it does for the trade on e2 that black changes off um, a square a, a piece that also wants to go to d5 but here he gets the total bishop pair in compensation so this should be very much okay for black he gains the space on the queen side and after a4 he has a very useful reply b4 it's very nice using this pin so white cannot take with the knight and should he decide to take with the queen black is getting to c2 and um, yeah this is certainly okay for black c3 was played and we get to a very comparable structure now but the rook is still on c8 yeah white has a two against one here on the queen side and um, if everything would um, would um, run well for white he'd be able to to push this and get a passer but black is not um, very cooperative here he just plays a5 to make sure this is not so easily done the whole position um, at first i thought is uh, maybe a little something for white because he's got this uh, ideas on the d6 pawn with knight to b5 maybe doubling with rook d3 those kind of ideas but if we look at the game continuation the way it went it, uh, there was a little repetition here but nakamura is uh, playing on 
Um, the way it went, it all felt very logical. Black is protecting d6 from the side, and it is not really apparent how white is going to increase his um, pressure here. Note that there is simply no option for white to trade on the c file as the h6 bishop is doing only one thing, but this <laughs> this is doing very well, preventing the this precise trade on the c file. So white really only has this, this piling up on the d6 pawn, and we see that white is putting um, the utmost pressure there, but it's really not leading too much. If we uh, look at this position, how is white ever going to, to win the pawn? If he, for example, retreats now, black can simply play queen b8 and um, yeah, put another defender on the pawn. White cannot take now because of this funny reply when this rook is under fire and it really has nowhere to go to without giving up the d6 knight. It's a very strange um, setup. Yeah, if rook takes, we have this kind of idea coming where the knight is in an awkward pin. The threat is bishop e7. And uh, that's very difficult for white to handle. It looks good at first, but how do you continue? White can try something like that, but black is very active here. This is a weakness, and especially e4 is a weakness. Bishop b3 is a move to come. Some of those knights um, are very much dependent on one another, and it's not a harmonious position. Yeah, he played rook c3, trying to exchange one pair of rooks, and uh, we, we got there. But still, it all seems to um, hold pretty comfortably for black. Yeah, if now knight takes d6, black is um, taking on d5 and has no problems. Yeah, it uh, all seemed very, very, um, yeah, a very, very clean game. Queen c6. Yeah, note that black after queen takes e4 also is okay. Yeah, white can do something Check. like that here, but... It's check. also going to end in some sort of perpetual check on one of the kings. In the game, we had queen c6. Check. Capture and then g3. Yeah, there are various ways now to, to get to a, to a draw. They um, went for, check. for this way. Check. Check. And now agreed to a draw. Yeah, I guess a very, um, very clean game with no um, mistakes on both sides. So it just happens. They both play well and end, it ends in a draw. Um, the interesting positional point of the game is really here where black must avoid to trade a trade as d5 against c6, but uh, should try to get uh, some useful role for his knight on d4. Like knight d4 takes b3 as uh, played in the game. Okay, the next move to look at is um, to pal of Carlsen. And uh, yeah, um, what about those two players? Yeah, to pal of in this event, he started terribly with two losses, but then really, really, um, yeah, he, he pulled himself together and then scored a couple of wins. So I guess he's, he's not enthusiastic about his performance, I guess. I mean, it is um, it is fifty percent. It's nothing super brilliant, but I guess considering that he started that badly, I think he's pretty much okay with that. And um, yeah, the world champion Carlsen. Yeah, he had a had a bad start really, losing to Caruana in the in the first turn. This um, game where he played very aggressively. After that, he managed to score two wins against um, Nakamura and um, and uh, Aronian yeah an end game grind against uh, Aronian that he that he won uh, nicely and um, yeah Hikaru really had a totally off day I mean even worse than um, even compared to his bad performance in the tournament this was really a bad game um, yeah and Carson was lucky to escape against Caruana in the second turn so not a brilliant event but uh, Still, we need to consider that uh, Carlsen with his plus one 
is uh, playing a 2800 performance it's not like he played like a patsa okay let's look at look at look at this game we got the Berlin wall and in fact we got the end game to part of allowed the end game check and um, yeah this is of course a common battleground nowadays Carlsen goes for one of the numerous lines with king eight here and b6 yeah there's really a, a maze of lines black has so many setups knight e7 bishop e7 bishop to d7 <laughs> and b6 and h6 and so on this is one one uh, beauty of this line for for black he can um, play this setup and then vary with uh, a ton of setups that all are playable in a way um and uh, it's very difficult for white to find some 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 clear way forward also a big advantage is that um, modern chess engines even very up to date on great hardware they have trouble to um, to get some somewhere in those positions let's see what topalov tried he played bishop f4 and we have bishop b4 is played yeah this is um a slightly uncommon way to play but it looks very interesting to to my eye because yeah if um, it is a very um, well-known effect that if black gets to exchange his bishop his dark squared bishop in this structure he normally is very okay because when he manages to exchange it and especially against a knight bishop against bishop is, is far less um, attractive but bishop against knight you exchange a knight which might help to uh, fight for the light squares on the king side we see that this is a kind of a light square blockade if you manage to liquidate one of those knights very often this play on the king side is um, is, is easier for black to to establish this kind of bind here that with later maybe maybe h5 that helps um, to prevent any g4 f4 business yeah, exchanging this is considerably favor considered uh, favorable normally and with bishop b4 he tries that right away it's funny that after knight e4 now black has the move bishop a6 and uh, yeah both bishops are suddenly very active yeah rook um, to c1 was now played i mean there is not really a, a great square available this looks normal but do you really want this mm, i don't think so this looks this looks really unattractive yeah, and white has really misplayed things. Yeah, he went rook c1, and now really bishop e2. Well, that's funny. This uh, knight is simply attacked, and you cannot, absolutely cannot allow a double pawn here, which would have would destroy your structure totally. Um, so Topalov played knight d2, and now black has this, uh, as mentioned, simple solution of trading on d2. Just giving away the bishop, but making sure that he has um, gotten this uh, this favorable piece distribution note that the bishop on f4 is always kind of a sad piece for white as it looks at this e5 pawn and does not do anything active so um i'd say that black already has no uh, problem here knight d4 was now played uh, this is uh, a move designed to also maybe go to e6, which can be a good square for the knight. Now to pile of plate bishop e3, attacking this knight. And um, yeah, the most uh, natural move and probably best move is to retreat. When to pile of plate bishop f4. Yeah, you already probably get a sneaking suspicion here. And in fact, um, this is what happened. They shuffled two times and agreed to a draw here yeah not um not a great uh, game for the spectators but um it is um understandable after this uh, this event of of totally uh, 10 rounds that there's some lack of energy in the final round plus um you need to look at um if you look at both players they're both known to be the absolute fighters around yeah carlson is very very rarely playing such a game and the same is uh, true for topalov so we, uh, we shouldn't be too critical about that. There are players who do that far, far, far more often. So um, it is, um, I guess, okay here. Also, it's not that easy to um, 
to really um, to really deviate from that. You can, but it's not like um, it promises any player very much. Don't forget that we already have opposite colored bishops, which uh, increase the drawing tendency enormously. So it's not like they had a super full-blooded fight that they could have uh, continued. It's a, it's a rather boring position that they didn't bother to to play for a ton of moves. So I uh, I really understand that. And we had fantastic nine rounds uh, before. So I, I don't really um, criticize them too much for that. Okay, so final game to look at for this round. The final round is Aronia Caruana. This is the duel between the former world number two, Aronia, and the new world number two, Caruana who really uh, made a huge step forward with this tournament. He gained, uh, I think, is it 35 points? I think it's 35 points, almost. Yeah, 35. And uh, this means that he's now almost 40 points ahead uh, of Aronia. Maybe even even some, some something 40, 46 maybe. Uh, it's, a huge, it's a huge difference with this uh, big score. Yeah, okay, let's look at this game. We had a symmetrical English, very popular defense nowadays to knight f3 or to, to c4. White is really having a hard time to, to get anything here. Um, one reason is that the line d4 takes, takes, e6 has uh, proven to be very solid for black. It's very difficult for white to get anything here. Um, the most popular try in recent years is a3. But this is also not a promising wider ton. Black can play bishop e7 castles, normal moves. It's uh, it's really quite an okay line for black. So white players very often try g3. And after that now, black has a choice, but mostly they play d5. The idea is that after c takes, knight takes, bishop g2, knight c7, black wants to set up this reverse maroxy. This is um, a line that Caruana had on the board earlier in the first round, in fact, against Topalov. They won a pretty convincing game. Aronian is doing something else. He plays d4. And um, this is a line that I, I play as well. So I, um, I fully understand why Aronian is doing this because c takes d knight d5 is not a position that I believe promises white very much. And in fact, I, I personally don't like it at all, but <laughs> it's not uh, that bad, I guess. But uh, I understand that white wants to avoid it. With d4, you get a more, yeah, um, a more, um, more interesting play in the center, I think. Yeah, um, what is the idea? One idea is that if black takes on c4, which is not a good idea, you have d5 and the knight will need to lose time. Black also can consider to take on d4. After that, knight d4 is played. And um, this is um, a pretty good structure for white. The only thing that uh, black can do here to try to irritate white is to take. And after that, we would get this kind of endgame, which uh, has been played a number of times by Bakromnik, especially in the, in the, I think it's mostly in the 90s, early 2000s where he had some nice, nice games with that. It's um, a line that promises white a very slight pull. It's nothing spectacular, but something that you can play for an advantage. Karwan, however, played e6, and this after c takes, knight takes, transposes to a line of the semi-tarash. Bishop g2. And now black takes on d4. This is probably the best line here, Black can also play bishop e7, but um, this leads to entirely different structures. Here white can decide to to get to a IQP position after all. Mostly they play this. And um, yeah, white is probably very slightly better here. C takes is the more solid choice. White captures and now black takes on d4. Okay, b takes. And now knight takes d4. Yeah, black is going for, for, for mass exchanges here, trying to reduce the pressure. Yeah, now Aronian goes for an interesting move. Um, I personally play queen d4 here, if I reach its position, which is um, nothing that, uh, that you can <laughs> too enthusiastic about, but still it's a position where you can try to do something based on the fact that you have the better bishop. 
yeah, black can play bishop b4 here or bishop d6, something like that. And um, it's a position that um, is very, very solid for black. It's nothing great or anything, but um, it's it's tough to lose this position. As, uh, as black, you can have good chances uh, for a draw. However, Aronian played this after check. bishop b4 check. He went king f1. This looks weird. <laughs> it's certainly um, a playable line, but um, I don't really believe that uh, this can be something that white can play uh, for an advantage with, simply with the rook on h1. How do you get your pieces coordinated? Yeah, what black does, he loses some time with his bishop. So white has uh, some activity going for him. And now with h4, he tries to make some sense of the, of the h1 rook. But rook b8, very normal move. You want to probably play b6 and bishop b7 later. h5, h6. Yeah, h6, a typical move. You want to stop the pawn before it comes to h6 and might be um, very annoying for the, for the black king. And e4, b6, bishop e3. I think this all looks um, very logical. If you consider the general concept with uh, with king f1, white occupied the center, he pushed h4, h5. It looks very normal. e5, yeah, putting a stake in the center. What black does probably not want to do is to allow something like e5, queen g4, and white has pressure on the on the uh, king side. This is why e5 was played. Yeah, white now captured. Probably this says this is a good decision. Um, white could also try to, to just close it, but um, it's not clear to me that after a normal, normal move like that, white really has any play. And uh, yeah, black is maybe coming with f5 at some point. And uh, you ask yourself if your king really is in a good uh, situation on the f file. So I think Aronian's move is fine, this capture and f4. It um, pretty much by force leads to what happens in the game. Check. Got the queen trade, bishop g4 with a tempo, and now bishop 2b2. Black's got two active bishops, and white still has this rook h1, which is not contributing to the game. Yeah, white is quickly trying to, to change that and wants to get rid of the, the bishop on g4 as well. Yeah, um, what are black's moves now? Um, yeah, he cannot take here. There is a very long <laughs> cover from the rook on b5. And if you go bishop um, to f3, white is going bishop g2. And this um, didn't help very much. He Check. went, oops, sorry. He went with, uh, with the trade. Could have gone to d1 to make things a little bit more complicated, but it does not really change much. Check. This is um, a very obvious way to play. Black is, uh, is quick with his rooks now and uh, certainly has no problems whatsoever. Rook b3 is a precise move. You want to get rid of this a3 bishop, which controls important square here. Yeah, we got, got to this position. And um, yeah, you probably already suspect that this game will end in a draw. And um, in fact, this happened after a couple of more moves. Here, they agreed to a draw in this uh, completely equal endgame. Yeah, um, it is uh, really not much to do here. Well, I actually have a different, I actually have uh, one more move for Aronia in, in my version of the game. <laughs> I had it uh, downloaded from the site. Okay, then this somehow my version had, had one more move. Okay, not a, not a big uh, deal at all. Yeah, it is simply an equal end game with nothing uh, to play for on, on that level. Yeah, um, this uh, final round certainly uh, wasn't the most uh, thrilling. But um, in general, we have seen a really great event. The number of draws was very low. I'm uh, not 100% sure. I didn't... Uh, calculate this properly, but we were above 50% during the tournament of, of decisive games. Of course, the last three rounds um, had uh, had many draws. We had, um, had how many draws? Let's have a look. We had eight draws out of nine games in the, um, in the final three rounds. 
which uh, certainly is also uh, due to the fact that this uh, kind of event um, it, it it takes its toll it's not like you play this uh, this kind of thing uh, all the time so it's um it's it's a matter of, of physical fitness and stamina so that at the end um, they uh, they are more inclined to play a draw. However, uh, those draws um, mostly were interesting. I mean, the final round really not that much, but the other draws were very much fighting games. Think of Caruana, Nakamura last round, or um, Carlson and Aronian was fought to the Bear King. So we had draws, but we didn't have uneventful draws. Yeah, um, and of course this tournament will be remembered as uh, probably the greatest uh, performance ever by Caruana, who played a 3080 performance, if I'm not mistaken, which is really uh, out of this world. And uh, I think it firmly establishes uh, something that you already uh, yeah, could, um, could suspect during this year, that Caruana is maybe the, the main contender to, uh, to challenge Carlsen in the future for the world title. He seems a bit more, yeah, a bit more focused when it counts. I'm not quite sure how to put it, but he uh, he f seems less intimidated by Carlsen than many other players. And um, he really has beaten Carlsen quite a number of times. The overall score is still um, okay for Magnus, but Caruana is at least managing to win games. There are other players who simply never win. I mean, look at Nakamura. Um, yeah, so um, great things to, to be expected. The next um, very interesting uh, event simply is, uh, is coming up um, right now. <laughs> and um, this is um, the, the, the big question if uh, there is a World Championship match with Carlsen or not due to um, his... Um, yeah, up to now, um, refusal to to sign this contract for the Sochi match. If um, Carlsen is not playing, we will probably have a, a very awkward situation because Fide will need to, to stage a world championship match. And this, uh, if I'm not mistaken, would be Anand playing Kayakin, which um, really sounds a bit ridiculous as uh, both players... Um, I mean, Anand qualified for the match and he will play, but... Um, it's, uh, it's really kind of ridiculous to play a world championship match without uh, Magnus. So it will be uh, very interesting to see what, uh, what happens in the next uh, couple of days. It really must be the next couple of days or maybe even today, September 7th, um, because this deadline has expired with the end of this tournament. And um, it doesn't look good if, if uh, what I read is... Uh, is the correct uh, current uh, the correct description of the of events, so maybe we really um, won't um, won't have this match. Okay, let's see what happens there. Thanks for watching this video, and hope you I hope you enjoyed the coverage. Thanks for watching.